Last week, I posted a video showing this inverter failing in my DIY Powerwall, and a real scary question came up, did I cause it to fail? We're going to dive into that in this video. I really want to thank a couple of YouTubers. Uh, first off, Doug Campbell. Uh, he's the first one to suggest that it was actually my fault this inverter failed because I used a relatively small size circuit breaker uh, on this inverter. I really hope it, it wasn't, uh, but you know, it inspired me to do a lot more research about these circuit breakers uh, and uh, what's going on here. And I, I think I have a little bit more information now that I can share with you. Uh, another person I'd like to thank would be Mark Osborne, uh, also on YouTube, who kind of um, took up uh, the, the other side of the debate. And it turned into quite a large debate in those comments uh, about whether it was uh, my fault with the circuit breaker or whether it might have been uh, something component-wise or maybe design-wise with the inverter itself. So uh, let's take a closer look at what might have happened. First off, when, when you start any kind of motor or compressor, uh, there is a surge, a surge of power just to get everything spinning. So start on the side. all that stuff has to get going and get going really quick. So there's, there's an inrush of electricity just to get it from a state of rest to a state of motion. Well, when it does that, it's exceeding the circuit breaker that's in your main electrical panel. So if your main electrical panel has 15 or 20 amp circuit breakers and you start that saw up, well, you've, you've exceeded the rating of that circuit breaker. And yet I don't pop them. You know, I, I run power tools in this garage all the time without popping the circuit breakers. I don't think I've ever popped a circuit breaker in this garage. So why is it that you can start up a saw exceed the rating of a circuit breaker and not pop it my understanding of that is that circuit breakers are built with time delays in them to specifically allow for that that surge of electricity what the circuit breaker is doing is it's protecting the circuit the circuit is the wires leading to that device you don't want the wires overheating and causing a house fire well, the wire is not going to overheat with a half second surge. The wire is going to overheat with prolonged use. It's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually it starts to burn the insulation. See, when I was doing the editing, the viewer window is very small and I had seen that spark, but I had actually thought that it came out the uh, back of the inverter and it wasn't until Doug mentioned the circuit breaker that I went and zoomed in and watched it in slow motion which I'm showing you guys. So that is uh, uh, certainly the spark coming out from the inside of the circuit breaker. This is made by a company called Midnight Solar. This is an 80 amp 150 volt DC circuit breaker. So I called Midnight Solar, they're the manufacturer of this circuit breaker and uh, asked them. And he, he, at first, he was unsure. He said, well, he has seen it go both ways. So he continued to ask me more and more questions about the gauge of wire, the size of the inverter, all these different things. Uh, and then there, there was another question that he asked, and he said, is there any damage to the circuit breaker? I said, well, there's no external visual damage that I can see. Uh, but in the video, you can see a big spark come out the bottom of the circuit breaker. Right then, he, 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 was, he had made up his mind. He said, okay, that is absolutely the inverter, not the circuit breaker. He said, if the circuit breaker trips due to an overload, you would never see a spark come out of it. He said, the only way that would happen is if there was a short in the inverter and it... It was an instantaneous failure all of a sudden, and that massive like um, internal arc, however that occurs. 
So I, I thanked him for his time for um, talking to me about this, but let's keep looking at it. I went ahead and replaced all the fuses uh, that were burned out. So now all the fuses are good. And if we go ahead and check continuity, see if I touch these, they beep. And we check them across the terminals. See, there's continuity there. So that tells me that there's an internal short somewhere in this uh, inverter. What that is leading me to believe is that something failed, some kind of component failed inside the inverter, which caused a short. Let's take a closer look at what's inside the inverter. And keep in mind, I'm just a dude in his garage. I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't even know what most of these things are or how they work together. Uh, but what I think I'm looking at here, uh, we have the positive and negative posts. That's where the electricity is coming in from the battery. And then we have nine wires that are positive, nine wires that are negative. And they go out to these individual components. Now, to me, all, all the fuses are identical. And you can look in and see that these are 10 amp fuses. We have capacitors, fuses, I'm going to call it a transformer because I don't know if there's a better word for it, and MOSFETs. We have, we have all these components grouped together to take some of the load of the inverter. And then we have that done again here, and again here, and over and over again, right? So we have nine of them. And I think the design is for the electricity to be shared, or the the load of the inverter to be shared equally among all nine. All nine of these have to do an equal amount of work before it then goes on some jumpers that are over here and jumps across to this secondary board, which I guess I'm going to call this the output board and the input board. So input of DC and over here output of AC. Now this is different than, uh, say, some of those other inverters that I've seen you guys share on YouTube, like the Magnums. They seem to have like one big giant transformer. Uh, they, they, they don't seem to be trying to share the load among small components. So maybe that is a design flaw, but I, I'm not an electrical engineer and I don't know. Uh, but on the 3000 watt, uh, it's not trying to share the load among nine of these. If I remember correctly, there were two inside that, but I'll have to go back and check my video. So the 3000 watt trying to share across just two groups of components, maybe it can more equally do that. Whereas trying to equally distribute the load across nine component groups, you know, I'm going to call that a component group. Maybe that's much more difficult to evenly share it. And maybe some of these took more of the brunt of the load and blew out. So it's just, it's just a theory from, from a guy in his garage. Now, since you guys suggested that it was the inrush current, uh, the surge of that saw, I decided to try and test that the best I could with what I have. Uh, what I did was I basically just plugged the saw into this outlet and I opened up these wires and plugged it into the wall outlet, turned it over here to the 100 amp, and then went ahead and pressed the start on the saw. And I allowed it to come up to full speed and uh, then come to a full stop. And I did that a dozen times while recording this number. And then I went back in editing and I watched. So the highest number I was able to observe was 39 and a half amps on the saw at the 120 volt side. So let's do some of that math out. And that was 39.5 amps for a second or less. And then if we multiply that by the 120 volts, we have 4,700 watts that it would have drawn.
but that 4700 watts would have been output of the inverter. The inverter needs to consume some electricity just to do its job. Uh, the inverter is over 90% efficient, but I don't know the exact number for that particular model. So let's just divide this by the 90%. And we can see that the inverter would have drawn from the batteries 5,200 watts. At the time that I was making that video, my battery bank was at 48.9 volts. So that shows that we would have drawn 107.7 .7 amps out of the battery through that circuit breaker. Now what overload is that? Because that's more than 80, the 80 amp rating of the circuit breaker, but how much? Well, if we subtract out the 80 amps, we have 27.7 .7 amps that we were over, and divide that by the 80 amp rating, we can see that we were 35% over. So we were drawing 135% of the rated capacity of the inverter for one second or less. Now, is that a problem? Well, uh, let's find out if 135% draw is a problem. To find out, let's go to Midnight Solar's website. It's right here, and these are the circuit breakers. This is the C line, Charlie line. Uh, and this is uh, the circuit breaker that I had is over here at 80, uh, 80 amps. And let's click on the documents. And this one here is called time delay values. So let's take a closer look at that. And if we go to the second page on this document, we can see this chart, which is for the C uh, values, the C series, the Charlie series, which is the circuit breaker that I had. Now, which one of these do we use? You see the delay? Uh, we have to get one more number from the circuit breaker. So let's look at the circuit breaker. And notice the value for delay is 36. So back on the chart, we look at 36. So this is the row that we're going to be using. And then which column do we look at? Well, remember, we calculated that we overloaded at 135, or we were drawing 135%. So we look at this column, line it up with the row, and we can see 35 seconds to 520 seconds. And that's because it's listed right here, trip time in seconds. So this circuit breaker would have tripped under normal operating conditions. It would have tripped somewhere between half a minute and eight minutes. It allows for 135% draw for half a minute to eight minutes, somewhere in that range before it finally trips. And they designed the circuit breakers specifically to allow that for motor starts, for surges, that inrush current, they know that's going to happen. The designers are smart. <laughs> Midnight Solar makes some pretty good circuit breakers. So since we overloaded it for less than a second, up to a second, somewhere in there, and this wouldn't trip until we were at half a minute, that it's more likely that the inverter failed first. In the, in the video, you can actually see me pull the trigger of the miter saw, and almost immediately, that circuit breaker fails. Well, what would have caused that? I mean, over here, if we follow that row across, 1,200%. We were nowhere close to that. We were only 35% over. We, we weren't trying to draw 1,200%. Um, but if you did... That would have caused an almost immediate failure. See that? 0 0.004 seconds to one second. So my guess is that uh, in order to draw that kind of immediate uh, percentage overload, uh, that would have been, again, pointing towards an internal short in the inverter. I'm, I could be misreading this. I could be misunderstanding it. Uh, but from... Uh, the dude in his garage point of view, uh, all the information is pointing uh, the finger to the inverter failing first. Uh, but hey, if I have misunderstood this, uh, please let me know. And I really enjoy your comments, and it helps a lot if you can share the video. Thank you guys so much for watching.